Okay, hi everyone. We are starting unit three, which is um, all about relationships and triangles. In our first section, we are going to take notes about terms that you will see throughout this entire unit. All of these terms you see on page one on your first packet are terms that you should be able to recall at any time. Many of them are quite logical. Some of them are really similar to each other so uh, whatever tips and tricks you can get to differentiate between them would be really good um, so this page is going to be very 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 important for the remainder of your triangle unit for unit three and probably beyond honestly um, to make sure that it's in a safe place but uh, this video is only going to focus on page one of this packet we're just going through the most common terms and what they look like on a triangle. So let's get started. Our first term is mid-segment. A mid-segment um, joins <laughs> uh, midpoints of two sides of a triangle. So when we look at the figure, um, remember segment means the side. Ooh, that is way too large. There we go. Segment means side. So if I'm looking at the middle of side AB and I'm finding the middle of side BC, their mid-segment would be the line that connects the two. And remember, when we cut something in half, we know that those two segments become equal to each other. Moving forward, you have to make sure that your notations are paired up and correctly written so that you, are, you know what has been created. It's going to be incredibly vital to solving problems in this uh, unit and beyond. If you don't put the notations in, uh, for one thing, you're not going to be able to see the relationships happening. And for a second, I will start taking points off because you, I can't keep answering everyone's question like, oh, is this equal to that? You can figure that out if you put the notations in. Okay, next term, we have perpendicular bisector. If you remember, perpendicular means creating a 90 degree and bisector means something cut in half. So <laughs> our definition reads, a line, segment, or ray that divides a segment into two equal parts and is perpendicular to the segment. So if I look to the right, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention also, try to have colors near you and a ruler near you because we want to have precise notes that are referenceable. Um, anyway, back to perpend perpendicular bisector. <clears throat> we are dividing a segment. So in this case, I'm just going to use segment AC as an example. I could have used AB, I could have used BC, but I'm just going to use AC. So dividing the segment in half, I take this like almost midpoint looking area, and all I do is I go straight up. And I'm very well aware of the fact that the line doesn't cross through the top angle, right? It, it doesn't have to. Sometimes it will, most times it probably won't. Okay. Next term, we have angle bisector. Again, an angle is when two lines intersect at a vertex, and a bisector means cut in half, creating two equal components. So an angle bisector is a line, segment, or ray that divides an angle into two equal parts. This term, in fact, we've used so often, um, should not be a surprise to anybody. So I'm going to choose... Angle A, I could have, again, chosen B or C, it doesn't matter. And if I have a bisector, that means that angle has been cut into two equal components. So always keep that in mind. Moving forward, we have median, a segment that connects a vertex of a triangle to the midpoint of the opposite side. So the vertex I'm choosing to focus on is going to be B, right? And considering that I'm going to look for the opposite of that, that means the segment I'll be looking at is AC. So a median is a segment that connects a vertex to the opposite side's midpoint. So oftentimes, this segment might be a little skewed. It might be slanted a little bit. Notice that I also put the congruency marks um, to denote that AC has been cut in half into two equal parts. Please don't forget that. 
Okay, next we have altitude. Uh, I always tend to remember altitude when we deal with mountains, right? If someone's like climbed 5,000 feet, their altitude of the mountain is like 10,000 feet or whatever. Um, because we're going from the highest point to the bottom. It's a measurement of highest point to the lowest point. So our definition is a segment that connects a vertex of a triangle to the opposite side so that it is perpendicular to that side. I forgot to add R here, my bad. Okay, it does not mean that it needs to be splitting it in half in any way. So median is very, oh sorry, altitude is very um, self-explanatory in that sense. So again, I'm just going to choose B as that vertex. And if I go all the way down, not paying attention to whether I'm going halfway between AC, all I care about is creating a straight line down that creates a perpendicular um, component, okay? Again, I could have chosen A or I could have chosen C, but I just chose to do B. Now, for the next four terms, um, I'm not a huge fan of the illustrations that are included with these terms, but we're going to do the best we can. And again, please have a color that pops available for you for these three. So pick one color for circumcenter, one for incenter, one for centroid, and one for orthocenter. <clears throat> All right. So <clears throat> circumcenter is the point at which the three perpendicular bisectors intersect in a triangle. Remember, looking up what a perpendicular bisector was, it was the second term, it is when we split a segment in half and go straight up. So this time when we look at circumcenter, it's telling me that all three sides split them in half and move that line up. So if I look at B to C, right, and we've cut it in half, showing the congruency marks, at point Y, I'll just keep going and going and going and going and going until I find um, that perpendicular bisector has been created, right? Same thing goes from A to B. If I just kept going and going and going there, I would have created this line. And then lastly with Z, if I had just kept going and going there, I would have created that line. The circumcenter is the point where they all intersect. Right, so that being said, with your color, all you need to do is highlight the same blue that I did. <laughs> the line that starts from Y, let's see, from Y, Z, and X, those are all the perpendicular bisectors. Um, what is not important are these little, this thing here. So if you have white out, you can actually use white out. If not, don't worry about it. Just highlight those lines that are relevant to circumcenter. Okay, cool. So moving on to the next one. We have in center. Okay, so the point at which the three angle bisectors intersect in a triangle. So if I look here, now I'm starting from my angles, right? A, B, and. C. So let's say I start at A. If I have a bisector here, I'm going straight across at B. If I have a bisector here, I am moving straight across. Also notice that they have the congruency marks listed every time they bisect. And then if I am starting at C, I move straight across, this time with three congruency marks. And the center where they all cross that is known as the in-center. So with your pen or highlighter or whatever you've decided to use, I would just highlight the purple parts. I erased one by mistake. That's it. Okay. Um, this M denotes that in-center part. And again, if you have whiteout, you can... Go ahead and get rid of the the, perp the perpendicular line ones. Why is my pen not working? That's annoying. Oh, because it's a highlighter. <laughs> Yikes, here we go. So if I got rid of that, I got rid of this, and that. 
And now my figure only shows those angle bisectors, creating an in-center. Okay, next up. Um, these ones are actually a lot, a lot easier. So centroid is the point at which the three medians intersect in a triangle. If you look up at your sheet, the median is the segment that connects a vertex to the midpoint of its opposite side. So these ones actually don't need to be fixed. Um, if you take your color and I start at A and I go to the middle point of the opposite side, right, then this becomes congruent with that. Then I go from C to X, A, B's, this and this side are congruent. And then lastly, oops, if I go from B to Z, A, C has been split into two equal points. That in center, I'm not sorry, I'm sorry, not the in center, the centroid is created by all the medians here. So actually you just need one color. Um, in this figure, there's nothing really much to edit. And then lastly, we have orthocenter, uh, the point at which all three altitudes intersect in a triangle. Remember, altitude is just going straight up, down, and creating a perpendicular line. So the altitude of A, I start at A, I go straight down to create the 90 degree. At B, start at B. I go straight down to the side opposite to create a 90 degree. And at C, I go straight across, creating an altitude and a 90 degree. So the point where they intersect all of that, that is known as the ortho center. If any one of these is confusing, please, please, please make sure you ask me in class to clarify any one of them. Some of them are quite simple. Some of them need a little bit of clarification, especially... I think, personally, circumcenter and in-center, considering they didn't actually um, give you the, like, the best figure possible for that. I do also have whiteout in class, so if you wanted to white out those extraneous lines just like I did, um, by all means, you can, more than, you can help yourself to that. <clears throat> okay, so that's just the first page. The next video will then move into the notes for um, using these terms and putting them into use, calculating and so forth. Okay, I will 